evening, gang. It's another late night job. Yes, it's Thursday, the 25th of May 2017. A warm welcome along to tonight's United Kingdom talk. It's, I always feel more relaxed at night. I don't know why that is. Do you feel like that? You know, especially after a hot day. Oh, hot day. Now, you will notice no jacket. No jacket because the air conditioning has gone wrong, boys and girls. Not a, well, It's worse than it sounds, actually. It's worse than it sounds. Now, you remember on the show, was it um, was it yesterday's show? We did a late, was it late night yesterday? I can't remember now. Was late night yesterday? Was it, what was it yesterday? Wednesday? No, very early Wednesday morning, wasn't it? I think it was with your very early Wednesday morning, like 12, 15, something like that. Anyway, I told you that I was having trouble with the air conditioning in this room. I've got one of those... Um, can you see that on the other camera or not? Just a minute. Can you see? Oh, oh no, sorry, wrong thing. Oh, dear. Oh, well, that's not working, is it? Oh, we got got a faulty camera. Look at that. How strange I look. Oh, very strange, Mister. Oh, well, we, we can't do that. Anyway, there's a there's a like a proper air conditioning thing on the on the um on the uh, on the wall behind me. You know, with a big fan outside. I've been having trouble with it. Anyway, I said I told you I was going to ring them up. So the next morning, um, Wednesday morning, I rung them up, which was yesterday, and I rang them at half past nine in the morning, and uh, the company that fitted it had been has been taken over by another company, right? So I uh, spoke to a bloke uh, uh, who put me through to an engineer. I explained the problem. He says, OK. He said, well, uh, I can come round and uh, make a visit. So, you know, I'm sitting there with my diary now. OK, well, when do you want to come? I'm thinking next week. He said, uh, I can pop over in about half an hour if you want. Oh, wow. Wow. When have you ever got service like that? Probably sitting there with nothing to do. That's why. Anyway, so the bloke came round. Sure enough, uh, he was at my house by um, half past ten. And he's come in and he's had a look at it. He said, oh, yes, sir. how long have you had this? I said, about 11 years now. He said, OK. He said, well, we'll do a few tests. And there's, there's a little little orange light flashing on it all the time when I try. And it's, it's actually on now because it does kind of blow out a bit of wind. <laughs> a little bit like myself. Hot air coming out my mouth all the time. So there is a bit of wind that comes out, which kind of does, a, does something, but not an awful lot. The cold air doesn't come. Uh, anyway, so he's gone outside. Uh, he said, oh, I'd, I'd go outside and have a look up there. He said, but I haven't got a ladder with me. He said, have you got a ladder? So I said, yes, yeah. so I got the ladder out for him. Up he went. And I'm in here. And now and again, he said, right, unplug it now. I said, unplug it in, plug it in, unplug it, unplug it, un unplug it in. Anyway, it turns out, of course, knowing my luck, the most expensive thing that could... Is that camera working yet, I wonder? I'm annoyed. Look, it's not working today. Look at that. Isn't that funny? Probably I'll do a restart and that'll start working. Um, uh, it turns out the compressor has gone wrong. Something's gone wrong with the compressor. The fan turns. It's not seized up or anything like that outside. Everything seems to be all right in here. He thinks it's the compressor. He said, I can order you a new one. Unfortunately, it's probably the, the worst thing that can go wrong. It's just happened like that. He said, I can order you a new one and repair it, no problem. But he said, what you've got here is now 11 years old. That's not bad. And he said, you might want to think about getting a new system in. So there we are. So that was yesterday. And he said the office would uh, contact me by email. They haven't yet. So if they haven't tomorrow, I might give them a ring and see what they say. Uh, and that's it. So I've got no air conditioning in here, and I'm I'm quite hot already tonight in this in this very skimpy shirt this evening. With these shirts getting tighter and tighter around my stomach. Oh God! Do you do you know I've tried on three shirts, three short sleeved shirts, till I could find one that I do do up around my stomach. With certain people, certain people keep reminding me of how I'm putting on weight, don't they, Gustav? And I think you're with us today, aren't you, Gustav? Yes. Certain people keep reminding me that I'm putting away. I'm fully aware of that, dear. It will be taken into hand, hopefully next Tuesday, when I go down to Slimmer's World for the first time. I, I, I need to get on that. I need to lose. I, I weighed myself today. I need to lose about a stone and a half, maybe two stone. Same as Adam. Same as Adam. So that's all in hand. So no air conditioning in here, and that's why I haven't got the jacket on. It doesn't stop there, um, because uh, I also have... In my bedroom, one of those portable air conditioning units. Uh, again, that one is about, that's got to be about 15 years old now. Of course, in this country, we don't use air conditioning that much. We're talking, 
I don't know, just a few weeks a year. But some of you, like me, I'm sure, sleep in the afternoon. I don't sleep all afternoon. I have two hours sleep in the afternoon because then I get up and then I go to work. Otherwise, I've been up all day and then I go to work and that's just, it, it, it just too tiring. I've slept in the middle of the afternoon for, my God, 20, 30 years now. That's completely normal to me. Now, in this weather, very, very difficult. Of course, you don't realise these air conditioners go wrong until you turn them on and it's hot. So I went into my bedroom, that was yesterday as well. I turned this thing, I thought, I don't think this is getting cold. Now, if you stand in front of these air conditioning things, you think they're getting cold because you're right on top of the damn things and it's, it's like blowing out air. I thought, is this working or not? <laughs> I was quite sure if it was working. Anyway, I went to bed and I got up and I thought, no, this can't be working. I'm still what? So that one had gone wrong as well, unfortunately. Easier to replace. This thing in here, I've got to get someone to do it. The one in there, you just buy a new one. So um, this morning, actually, uh, me and my friend Ronnie, we went to uh, home base. I'd already looked it out. They're actually quite difficult to find these things now. All sorts of shops used to sell these. You know, uh, I, I know B&Q used to sell them, Wix used to sell them, Argos used to sell them, and there would be like a selection of different ones. Now, they either don't sell them, or, 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 or there's like only one version. So very disappointed in that. I found two on offer in Homebase, in Sainz it's not Sainsbury's, in Homebase. So I, I looked it up on the internet last night. And they said they had some in stock at the home base uh, around here. We've got a home base uh, in Bracknell. So I went in there uh, and I said, can you tell me where the air can do? And no one seemed to know where they were. Oh, I think they're around the front, mate. You know, front around the front, mate. So I looked around the front. We couldn't find one there. So I um, asked someone else, oh, I think they're with the lights at the back. So we're wandering around this. No one took us to the air conditioning. Not good customer. No, why didn't someone take us there? I hate that, don't you? You go in a shop, or can you tell us where to bake me at aisle five? And then they walk off. Take me there, dear. It's not like that in Waitrose. Not only do they take you to the item, they collect the item off the shelf and place it carefully in your trolley or basket. Thank God for that. Not in there. Yeah, it's just down the back, mate, by the light. So we wandered round and round. Eventually, we came across these air conditioning units. Now, it was about half the size. These are push-around ones. So you can use them in any room you want to, if you want. But mine is permanently situated in the bedroom, you see. Um, so uh, I looked at this thing, and I thought, it, it only looks like it's half the side of mine. So I, I, I loaded it onto my trolley. And I pushed it down there, and I, I, I'm paying for this thing. I said, do you, have a, do you have a more powerful one of these? So she said, let me look for you. Tap, 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 tap. She said, yes, we've got a, this is an 8,000 BTU or something. I don't know, BTU, I think she said. We've got a 12,000, that's the other one. And what's the, dif the difference in price was, um, it, actually, the difference, <laughs> 250, 150. The difference in price, I think, was about 75 pounds, something like that. They, it was quite an expensive item, I have to tell you. So um, I'm, I'm, I'll go with the small one, right? She says, um, well, we've got a couple left. And she's called someone over and she's having a word with me. I said, well, I'll take the small one. I said, if it's not good enough, as long as I keep the box, can I bring it back? She said, yes, no problem at all. So I've now paid for the small one. And she's all helping. And I've loaded it on the trolley. Uh, and, of course, a couple of plants. Oh, endless plants I keep buying. Endless plants. I'm terrible in a garden centre. I went in a garden centre um, yesterday, actually. Now, remember, it's, it's Wednesday now, so Tuesday. Oh, it's oh, that's about to click round to Friday. Watch that. It, it'll click round to Friday. It's always a very exciting moment. It'll go 26 in a minute. We'll just take a break here while we're waiting for the calendar to change. I like the click it makes. It'll go ooh, click, click, click. Watch it, watch it, watch it. You want one of these in your room. I know you do. Did you see that? <laughs> that is, I've had that over two years. It's the first time I've seen a day and a date change at the same time. That was very exciting. Well, it's all over now, isn't it? I might as well go home. Oh, I am. I am home. That was so exciting. Don't get any better than that, you know. That was the highlight of today's program. Watching my, <laughs> my calendar go round. Yeah. So the other day, uh, only Tuesday we was in the garden. So I went in for one hanging basket. 50 quid later. Again. 50 quid later. 
plants everywhere. I didn't buy a hanging basket in the end either. What I did is I bought lots of plants to make hanging baskets because I've got the plastic things. You know, the plastic things you put them in. The, the baskets themselves. And it's a hell of a lot cheaper to buy a li lots of little plants and put them in yourself. And I was do actually doing those tonight. Anyway, back to the story. Now, where were we? I've forgotten where we were now. Um... What was I going on about? Oh, yes, the air conditioning. The air conditioning. That's it. So I've now loaded the trolley. Ronnie's going out with his two plants. And I'm going out with my air conditioning and three plants. At which time a man has arrived with a trolley. Uh, who says to her, where do you want it? And I look round. Guess what? It's the large air conditioning unit. Now, this looks more like the one that I already had. Although I wasn't convinced that I needed one the same size. You know how things are? Everything's got smaller, isn't it? Not that, I hope. <laughs> I, th I gather that gets smaller as you get older as well. But that's another subject for a biology lesson. Um, so I wasn't convinced I needed one the same size. I thought, well, maybe they've got smaller and they're just as good. Like speakers. Like loudspeakers. Now, in the new place where I'm doing karaoke, it's not a new place, but the place I'm now doing karaoke on Sunday nights because I've got a new job. So I work Sunday nights now. That's karaoke at the Camden Eye in uh, Camden Town, 8 till 11 o'clock every Sunday night. Fantastic atmosphere. It's a bit small. I warn you, it's a little bit small. It's not tiny. It's a bit smaller than the places perhaps that I've worked um, uh, recently. However, fantastic in there. Absolutely lovely people, great people, uh, a young, happy-go-lucky atmosphere in there. OK, so if you want to come down Sunday. Oh, it's bank holiday as well. It'd be packed this week. I'm telling you, it'd be packed Sunday, 8 to 11 o'clock, OK? Um, uh, air conditioning. Oh, just a minute, I've lost the place again now. <laughs> uh, yes, so in that place, the speakers are, are actually quite small. But I'll tell you what, one of the best sound systems I've ever worked on the sound is fantastic in there. And they're only small speakers. And I was thinking, well, maybe that small one will be all right. And I had it on the trolley. I thought, well, and I, I'm, I took another two steps. I said, I'll tell you what, let me take the big one. Because, you know, if you get one that's too big, you can always turn it down a bit. Whereas if you get one that's too small and it can't do the job, there's nothing you can do about it. So I paid the extra 75 quid and I took away the uh, large one, which I bought back to my house. Um... And set it up immediately in my bedroom. Now, unfortunately, the the tube it's like a, um, uh, an air a a, um, a tumble dry tube comes out of this thing. Now, I already had a tube in the wall that someone did. Well, I say someone did it for me. <laughs> when I put that in about fifteen years ago, I made the hole myself, and I made such a bad job of it because I'm, you know, Chris Reed and DIY. We don't really go together, <laughs> and I made the hole too big. And I had to get another bloke in to fix what I'd done. And the, the the tube of the old one goes into this, and it's kind of fixed in there, you know, with cement and all that. Well, of course, this tube is bigger, isn't it? Oh, God. Blimey. So what I've done is I've cut the smaller tube and put the bigger tube over the smaller one and use white gaffer tape to seal the gap around it. And it works. Let me tell you, it works. I turned it on. I went out the room. I thought, oh, I can't wait. And, and I left it half an hour and I went back up and I opened it and I thought, oh, well, it feels a bit cooler. And then I looked up. I'd left the window wide open. How stupid can you be? Anyone who's got air conditioning knows you've got to close the blooming window. Oh, dear me. So I closed the window, but now we were going out somewhere else. So we then went to Waitrose. We'd done our shopping in Waitrose. Uh, we had uh, naughty food in there, i.e. chips and, oh, Garlic, flatbread, yum, yum, yum. Isn't that delicious? Because it was so late by now. Garlic, flatbread, enjoyed that. We've done our shopping in there. And then Ronnie took a load of the um, Waitrose newspapers. And, of course, one of the staff who knows us said, what are they all for? Uh, and I said, well, I've got a really old incontinent cat. That's what they're for. We'd already, unfortunately, been up to the train station, but it was a bit late. All the metros had gone. I mean, maybe so I think people have been watching this show and they're doing the same thing. If you've got an incontinent animal, you know, you need newspapers all over the floor because they go everywhere. But they'd run out. 
So he took some from Waitrose, and I said, oh, I've got a really incontinent. Oh, she said, you should have said so. We get the new papers out on Thursday. I can bring you the old ones. Because, you know, whenever you get newspapers out, you've probably seen them at news agents and all that. You've always got these piles of paper everywhere, haven't you? Where they haven't sold them. Well, obviously, the Waitrose was, they don't sell them. I don't know what they do with them. But she said she's now going to take round, because she lives quite near Ronnie. Uh, my mate. So she's now going to take round the use the the old papers to him. How fantastic is that? And that stops them being uh, thrown away or or recycled. Well, I am recycling them, aren't I? For the cat. So that's handy as well. Very handy as well. Um. Then uh. Then we then we came back here, picked up the old air conditioner unit and took it down the uh, uh municipal dump. Uh, which which you can get rid of that completely free of charge. It, it goes with uh, electrical items, fridges, freezers, uh, televisions. I uh, put that there. Um, and then I came back here, uh, turned it on, closed the window, closed the door, turned it on, came downstairs, had a cup of tea, and I thought, right, time for my afternoon nap. I came back here, opened the door. Oh, bliss! Bliss, bliss, bliss. It is so lovely and cold in there once again. And you know what? It's funny. It's not until you get a new one switched on that you realise how bad the old one had become. You know what I mean? A bit like anything that you buy, really, isn't it? Um, I'm just trying to think of something now. Uh, I can't think of anything. Like, like electric toothbrush. Over time, they get more and more useless. You buy a new one, Jesus, and then it shakes your head off its shoulders, doesn't it? So that's what I've been doing today. And that's why I'm in a shirt now. Because it's a bit warm in here at the moment, especially tonight. Isn't it lovely? I quite like the hot weather, but I do like a room where I can get out of it. And at the moment, in this room, I can't do that, unfortunately. Let's say hello to some people who are with us nice and early today. Greetings to Adam the Plumber, who is on air. Oh, Adam, also this week, I've had two Mr Whippy ice creams. That's terrible, isn't it? Two Mr Whippy ice creams. But... But I'm sticking to the breakfast. In the morning now, I tend to have scrambled eggs and baked beans and onions. That's what I have every morning now. Apparently, in Slimmer's World Talk, all that is no sins. So I'm sticking to that and, and I'm enjoying the breakfast as well. Strangely enough, it seems to be making my stomach work, work a bit better as well. Um, I'm having a bit of success with that as well. I wonder, I wonder. Uh, hello to Joanna. Greetings, Joanna. Oh, by the way, Joanna, I meant to tell you, um, a little while ago, of course, you you, you asked to, to friend me again after I wasn't, I, I had been your friend. And then I got a little message that you wanted to be my friend again. And I assumed that someone had uh, ripped off your Facebook profile. And that's why it took me so long to accept that. All right, just just in case you're wondering, why did that take so long to accept that? Because there's a lot of that going on at the moment. I don't know if you've noticed. Um, there's people stealing people's profile and setting up a new profile. I think scammers and people like that. So that's why, my darling, it took me so long to re-accept your friend thing. So I hope you don't mind. Oh, well, uh, hello to Craig, who says it's a late one today. Yes, it worked tonight, dear. It's a late one tonight. It is indeed. Hello to Lewis. Greetings, Lewis. I hope you're well today. Craig says, um, I used to love going to trade at Turnmills. It was the best club ever. Yes, indeed. Um, I put a little little note up um, on my uh, Facebook uh, today, actually, because someone's posted a little note on a lamppost outside the building that that used to be the place where we went to this nightclub called Turnmills, and it was a fantastic time. Various people put in different pieces and bits and pieces on there. So, yeah, we I used to love it there. I went every single Saturday night for about five or six years, around about 1994 to 2000. Yeah. When I went to trade, um, uh, Craig, there was no light lounge. It was just bang, bang, bang. In fact, talking of hard house and hardcore, I've actually started listening to a hardcore radio, a hard house radio on, um, on, on, on the Internet. There's a hard house radio on the Internet. On, on, I've got it on my tune in radio. Do you want to know what one it is? Hang on. Let's find it. I'll tell you what it is. Have you got tune in radio? It's an app. For um for your iPhone, I'm sure you can get it on those um Android phones as well. Let me see if I can find the name of the station. Hang on, TuneIn Radio. There it is. 
I don't know if you like hard house. Were you were you a light lounge person or a harder? Hard house is bang, 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 bang. I've started listening to it in the car. And let me tell you, it takes you back. Oh, my God. It takes you back to when you were dancing away at that club. It absolutely does. Now, where is it? One moment, please. Oh, it's on my favourites. Where is it? Favourites. Hard House UK. Here it is. Hard House UK. Look at this. Hang on. Hard, Hard House UK. Oh, yeah, it's a bit bright for you. Can't see it. It's that one there. The third one down here. Let me just play you a little bit. Hard House. A lot of you won't like this. I'm telling you that now. This is Hard House. What we all used to dance to at trade on a sat. Well, I say. Here it comes here. Oh, you know that one, don't you? Eh? Hey? Do, 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 do. It's not, not much banging going on. We'll come back to that in a minute, Craig. But yeah, I've started listening to a hard house radio station. But it gets you it gets you all like all all kind of up, doesn't it? Listening to that stuff. And I haven't listened to that for years. Not since I stu- I stopped dancing at trade at it. And I weren't fat when I used to go to trade. You would we were dancing from like half past four in the morning till about one o'clock in the afternoon. No one was fat in trade. Look, at maybe that's what I should start doing again. Going to clubs. I did get the opportunity not to play at trade, but uh, a, a few years ago, I used to do the Saturday night um, music at the Two Brewers. Here, here it is. Here, here we go. This is Hard House. Right, you ready? Listen. Listen. Oh, yeah. Let's, we're there. We're there. We're there. Here it comes. Here it goes. Yeah. I love it. Come on. We love it. Oh, oh. If any of the Manilow girls now, they're probably having heart attacks at the moment. <laughs> Dear me. I did did actually DJ Hard House about, oh, it was a few years ago now, and I really enjoyed it. But unfortunately, I was just filling in for someone else um, because they were, uh, he had a, actually had a heart attack, believe it or not. And I was filling, he was, he was a bit older than me, funnily enough, uh, but it was, it was his job. So I was only filling in for him. And uh, much that I'd love, if I was D, if I was to DJ properly again, that's what I'd want to be playing. But very difficult to get in. Very difficult to get in. I mean, I could do little radio shows. You know, I used to do mixtapes all the time. I used to do mixtapes for people. And I never sold them. I just gave them away. Uh, mix and then mix CDs, or, you know, like one long, one long um, hour, hour and a quarter. I think it was an hour and a quarter you used to be able to get on the CD. And I used to do these and just give them away to people generally. Other people used to charge, you know, £10 a time. <laughs> Not very good at business, I don't think, really, am I? So, yeah, fantastic club trade. Oh, and it all used to go on in there, didn't it? My God! And I was a part of all of it. All, I mean, all of it. I was. <laughs> Thank you. Um,. Uh, good evening to Rod Brown tonight. Adam's with us. Good evening, Adam. Oh, I've said hello to you already, haven't I? Adam the plumber, shouldn't you be in bed? I'm sure you must have an early start today. Now, why have you said 12.15 there, Adam? I'm wondering why you said 12.15. Why have you said... Is something going to happen at 12.15, lovey? Do let us know. 12.15. Hello to Nathan. Matt Gardner's there tonight. Hello, Matt. Uh, I think you've... Have you finished your shows now? I think you've finished your show. Matt's in uh, musicals. He's one of our top, top karaoke singers, Matt. And he's a nice bloke as well. He lives uh, not too far away from me in uh, Woken. Matt, I don't know. Did I tell you the date of the karaoke we're doing in Woking? It's, it's still about a t- couple of months away. It's on Saturday the 29th of July. All right. Where's that, my glasses now? Saturday the 29th of July is our um, karaoke night in Woking. More details to follow when I get them from my... Uh, uh, friend Rachel, who's kind of run, uh, Rachel and Anne, who are running this event, and we're, they're raising money for the Barry Manilow Music Project, which um, gives instruments to schools and that sort of thing. Do they do it here, or is it just for America? I can't remember now. Um, Lewis loves the shirt. Do, do you want me to wear this tomorrow night, Lewis? I can wear this tomorrow because I've only got it on for about an hour now. It won't be too sweaty tomorrow. In fact, you can test my. Well, Lewis works behind the bar at. Um, at uh, Central Station. I'll let you test my sweat levels tomorrow by coming and smelling underneath my armpits. Are you liking the sound of that, lovey? <laughs> Is that a nice thing to do? I was sweating last night at the quiz, at the Wednesday quiz. Oh, it was hot in there last night. Oh, dear. Good night. Excellent night. Um, we had... 
six teams in there last night. And Ray Reynolds uh, turned up and their team won by about, what was the, I think it was four, but they won by three points last night. Excellent. Ray Reynolds, well, he was so pleased. So they win a £30 bar tab, you see. It's free to play. Whoever want to come down, quiz night at um, uh, the King's Head Theatre Bar every Wednesday night, 8.30 till 10.30. Free to play, £30 bar tab. Can't be bad, can it, Lewis? You'd soon get through that £30 worth you, would, wouldn't you, my love? Yes. <laughs> oh, dear. Gustav Sayer. Um... Uh, do, 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 do. Gustav, Gustav says Gustav with a V. He says I don't pronounce his V. You see, I used to call him Gustav, but he said that was wrong. So I, I, I try so hard to say his name, and he's never. He's one of those people that's never happy, Gustav. Aren't you, lovey? You always find something wrong, lovey, even when you're very drunk. Which was most times that you're in the pub. Uh, Gustav says, I merely pointed out your double chips, ketchup, custard creamed, galaxy chocolate diet might not be helpful. Yeah, but lovely Maureen brings me in these things. Who I cannot offend her by saying no, I don't want it, can I? You're so cruel, you really are. Um, let's see. Let's, uh... <laughs> Fiona's there. Hello, Fiona. What are you doing there? Little Fiona. Now, she runs a pub with her lovely husband, Nick, called the Golden Pot. I, bet, well, I went there, man. Very nice indeed. They've got a whole catering business there, which they kind of, I think they kind of fell into that. They, they didn't intend to do it because her husband used to be um, a black taxi driver. I think, you know, I, I wonder about all these taxi jobs. Black taxis, Uber drivers, mini cars. I have a feeling, you know, in... in, in I don't know, in 10 years' time, that'll all be automatic. It will. You'll, you'll have an app on your phone and you'll, you'll type in... Da, 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 and this and, and, I don't know, a pod will arrive outside your front door. You'll get in it and it'll just take... And there'll be no driving jobs. They're already testing um, big juggernaut lorries somewhere, you know. And it well, didn't, didn't I see somewhere there's now a, a cargo ship with no staff on it that's all automatic. Someone on a joystick somewhere or, or a computer running the thing. We won't need this. We are being completely replaced by robots. Do you think a robot could do what I'm doing? Possibly. <laughs> Possibly, I don't know. You, you might actually get to the point without all the crap that goes around around it, mightn't it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Lovely to see you, Fiona. If you're still there, I know I go on a bit, love. <laughs> we tend, I think we lose a lot of people most of the time because I go on and on. Never mind, don't bother me. Just say what I like on it. Tweety Charlotte, hello, who says, I like your shirt tonight, Chris. Reminds me of the 1980s video games. It's a fun pattern. Um, is it a video? I don't think it's a video game. Can you? It's just little shapes. I did think at one point they were marijuana plants, but I don't think they are. Oh, don't. I did. I tried that once. Oh, my God, never again. That was about... That's got to be about 30 years ago. I shall never forget. At the time, I used to smoke. And I was working at the Black Cap. And my friend, uh, David Rosen, again at the time, used to smoke this stuff. And I used to smoke cigarettes. And I was always a bit funny with drugs. Do you know what I mean? I'm, oh, I don't know about that. Oh, I'm a bit, bit prudish. I certainly was then when it comes to all this business. I used to smoke cigarettes. I, know, I, I smoked quite a lot at that time, a long, long time ago. And it might even be longer than 30 years ago. Anyway, one Sunday after, I'll never forget, one Sunday afternoon, David Rosen said, why don't you come to the Vauxhall tonight? So we went to the Vauxhall. And in those days, everyone used to be able to smoke in the pubs. So I smoked like, one cigarette after another. He said, here, Chris, do you want some of this? Oh, what's that? He said, oh, it's just a bit of blow. Oh, I said, oh, I don't know about that. He said, well, it's up to you. You can if, oh, I don't know. He said, go on, try, just try a little bit. So, oh, give us it here. So I went, like that. He said, all right. I said, yeah, it's all right, I suppose. I don't know if I like the taste or not. He said, okay. He said, uh, anything happening? I said, no, not at all, not at all. I did, I'm so, you know, I didn't know anything, really. How old was I? I was quite that. I was 20, I think I was 27 or 28 at the time. 28, 38, 48, 49, 50. Oh, it's about so it's about oh, it's about twenty six years ago, a little bit more recent than I thought it was. Anyway, so I carried on. He said, "Go, go and have a bit more, hold it in, and then let it out." And I'm kind of standing up against the wall at the time. He said, 
I said, there you go, you can have it. He said, oh, no, you might as well finish it now. So everyone's smoking in this pub, including this stuff. I don't know how we got away with it. And um, <laughs> all of a sudden, I just dropped to the floor. <laughs> Oh, I dropped to the floor. And fortunately, we were next to a fire exit. And um, David and a couple of people helped, helped me. They were literally dragging me out of here. And they closed the door. And we're now sitting on the pavement outside this pub. Oh, God, you're all right. Because you'll be all right in a while. You'll be all right in a while. Oh. And of course, I've got my car there. i got my car there as well. I said, well, I, I said, oh, I'm going to go. Um, uh, he said, well, um, uh, you'll have to wait a, a bit. Oh, I'll oh, take me home, take me home. Anyway, so uh, someone else drove me home. And David was there as well uh, in, in my car this week. As I say, it's 28 years ago, whatever it was. And um, on the way, I'm in the back of the car. Them two are in the front. And uh, I'm, I'm like this at the window. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, can you stop? And we, 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 I, I said, you're going to have to stop. He said, well, I can't stop. We were in like a one-way system because they were doing roadworks. Cones either side of us. So I opened the window. <laughs> oh, I did feel sorry for the people behind me. If I'd have realised there was anyone there. Anyway, this carried on for a while. Eventually, we got back to my flat in Wandsworth. That's how long ago this is. And... Uh, they they put me on the settee. Just lay there for a while. You'll be. I promise you, you'll be all right in a minute. And then so time passed. And then all of a sudden, bang! I was back in the room. It was as quick it, as quick as it came on. Suddenly, it, it it went as well. And and that was it. And I never touched it since. I never. Oh, and now the stink of it. Oh, it's vile that stuff. If you smoke that stuff, please don't smoke it around me. I can't stand the smell disgusting <laughs> so that that was my only ever experience with that stuff and I shall never be trying that again along with the cigarettes of course I, I stopped smoking again about 25 years ago now uh, which was one of the best things I ever did um, hello to Stephen he's in Australia good evening Stephen nice to see you today and we got a phone line open as well if you want to call in at some point uh, this evening about anything at all that's okay uh, phone line is open as well 020-8144-3477 is my local London number okay 020 have I got push button there just a minute there we are. 020-8144-3477 is my phone number. I've also got Skype. Skype name, United Kingdom Talk. If you're somewhere else in the world, you want to call free, then use Skype. Skype is United Kingdom Talk. So once again, phone number 020-8144-3477 or Skype in on United Kingdom Talk. Hello to Alan Russell. Good evening. Loving the late shows. Oh, there won't be too many. There just happens to be a couple of nights off that I've got together. Although I'll be off Thursdays soon, I will have uh, Thursday. Do you know, I quite fancy doing another quiz night somewhere. So um, if if you if anyone knows anyone that might want a little quiz night on a Thursday, um, then I'd be uh, I'd be well up for doing it. I do one, as I say, on a Wednesday. I'd quite like to do a second quiz night somewhere, perhaps on a Thursday night. So, so if anyone knows anyone that might want a, a quiz night on a Thursday or indeed a karaoke, then uh, do let me know, OK? Because I should be finishing at the uh, usual Thursday place in uh, uh, probably in two or three weeks now. It can't be that. I still haven't got a date yet. Um, so I would. I, it, he did say June, so... Um, that's when they're going to start opening until three o'clock in the morning. Hello to Kareem. Good evening, Kareem. Hope you're doing well today, sir. Paul Gallagher is there. Uh, Paul says he likes the flat garlic bread. Oh, it's always oh, it's beautiful. No, Joanna, I didn't have that tonight. That was this afternoon. I had the flat bread and chips. Very, very delicious. For tonight, when I finish my show, I have, as provided by Adam the Plumber, my Slimming World Dark Chocolate Crisp. Because he'd give me a few boxes of chocolates, which I haven't touched yet. And there's no chocolate biscuits or crisps in the house. So it's gonna, I'm going to have to have... Uh, apparently, I'm allowed two of these. I'm actually allowed two of those. So that's what I'm having, all right? Hello to James Clark, who's liking the shirt. Thank you, James. Alan says, I'm watching the show laying naked on my sofa with the windows and curtains and legs... Sorry, with the windows and curtains wide open. It's too hot. Neighbours are watching the show from across the road in their flats on my big screen. <laughs> Good! Hello, neighbours! Everybody needs good neighbours. I don't watch that anymore. Do you? 
Anyone watch Still Neighbours? Anyone watch that anymore? I stopped watching that when Helen Daniels died. Or whatever the character, whatever the uh, actress's name was. Oh, no, you've got, they're actors now. Uh, do you know what? That's a new thing. The actresses, uh, some actresses don't like being called actresses anymore. They say it's sexist. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Do you? Oh, go on, say it. Oh, that's because you're a white middle-aged man and you don't understand women. Oh, do me a favour. Get real, will you? Uh, James says, pat it with tissue. Um, <laughs> James, yes. And it happens when I have spicy food. It happened the other night when I had spaghetti arabetta, arabata, whatever it's called. And again, last night, sadly, on the way home, quick trip to Five Guys for some of their delicious Cajun chips. Small, small Cajun chips and the delicious vanilla milkshake from Five Guys. Total cost nearly 10 quid for chips and a shake. But they are very, very delicious in there. And whenever I eat spicy food, James, my head starts sweating like anything. That's absolutely true, that is. <laughs> 0208 Has anyone else got a bald head or going thin there? It's actually, that's gone completely there now. And I'm doing it, and it's actually a little bit sticky on the top there. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't come out with bites because just before I came up tonight, I thought, oh, have I? Do you know what? I haven't, have I? I've left that bloody sprinkler on downstairs on, on a water meter. Oh, my... I'm going to have to go downstairs and um, turn that sprinkler off. Oh, my God. That's been on for an hour. How much has that cost me? I'm going to have to play you a bit of music while I go down. Hang on a minute. <laughs> um, what do you want? Let's see. What have I got? Um, yeah. Listen to this for a second. I must go down and turn my water off. Hang on a minute. All right. Stay there, stay there. Oh my God, that water meter will be going mad, love. That's been on for an hour. I never put it on for an hour. I shall have nothing left. I can hear it from here, the water meter. Going round and round. Dear me. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Who's been hacked? Out? Who's been hacked? Has someone been hacked? It's happening quite a lot of the time now, actually. You've got to be very, very careful. All right. Um... Let's just scroll down a little bit there. Uh, Paul agrees with the smell of that blooming drug stuff. What's it called now? It's it's a rank smell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, 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 I don't know how far how far did we get up on the messages? Just a second. Uh, do do do. Tune in radio. No, not tune in radio. It's yeah. It, it's 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 tune in. It's an app. Tune in radio. And on there you get lots of different radio stations. Whatever you want. You can have hard house, R and B, religious music, talking, whatever. It's all on there. Thousands and thousands of radio stations from all over the world. It's it's very good. It really is. Now that's it. There we are. I'm back now. Uh, oh, you like that music, did you? That's the music I used to use before I replaced it because I got permission from uh, David Arnold, who wrote that music. You know the one at the beginning. Uh, da, 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 da. David Arnold wrote that, and he gave me permission to use it. So that's what I use now. Hello to the lovely Danielle. Greetings, Danielle. Will you ever appear again at one of my karaoke nights, love? You've got little children to look after now, haven't you, darling, eh? Ah, uh, well. 
Um, Joanna says, I'm a Manilow girl, but she loved the music. What, the hard house? Bang, 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 bang. I could dance all night long. I could have danced all night. Yes. Evening, Dino. Dino joins us tonight. Um... Uh, gre greetings to Chris. Hello, Chris. Evening, you sexy beast. You are, of course, referring to me, I suggest. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> and Wendy's with us tonight as well. Hello, Wendy. Uh, Danielle says, a robot couldn't do what you're doing. Well, you never know. A ro robots could be watching me at this very moment and will and could impersonate me. Do be very, very careful. Am I a robot now? You don't know. Ben Parker's there. Hello, Ben. Who says, have you been replaced? No, I haven't been replaced yet. What, by a robot? Do you think this is a robot? Ben Parker thinks this is a robot. How was your Tuesday night, Ben? Let us know. Alan says he's done karaoke in South London. Uh, used to work with a guy called Rocksteady Eddie. What a great name, Rocksteady Eddie. Do you remember him, Chris? I worked with him for about eight years. No. Don't know Rocksteady Eddie. Oh, he died two years ago, did he? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, Alan's bald. Well, it's just one of those things, isn't it? Put your flag up. What flag, dear? I've got a flag to put up here. Dear. Anyway, I've good news. The good news is I've now turned off the water so as to stop, so as to rapidly stop the... Um... <laughs> Gustav, have you got a black eye? Now, how did you do that? Who did you upset? You weren't talking about teeth to someone, were you? <laughs> now what is it going something that you're going on about a flag what flag are you talking about I don't usually have a flag up oh what flag are you talking about dear I can't see a f what what you mean the union the flag's on there isn't it isn't the flag there the flag's there dear can't you see it very strange people here tonight. Right, let me just reload this thing on there because I'm I'm losing you. Uh, do 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 do. I need a like somewhere. Who who liked it? Will that one work? That might work, won't it? Oh, the flag on the screen. Isn't the flag on there? I can see it. Hang on a minute. Is the flag not on the screen? Hang on a minute. Let me play 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 myself to me. Yes, it is. It's on there. The flag's there. Right next to the calendar. Are you blind? Pay full attention to the show, will you? I can see the flag there. What are you going on about, dear? It's there, isn't it? I can see a flag. There you are. See? Alan can see it. Something wrong with you. Hello, Tom. Evening, Tom. People are, People can't see the flag for some reason. Oh, no, it's not Danny Davis calling. Give it a rest, Danny. Can you call in a bit later, love? I don't want to lose too many people while you're calling in, dear. <laughs> Look at this. Poor old Prince Philip. Look at this. I mean, honestly. How old is he? They made him wear that in the hot weather. Give him a break. He's done the job now, and he, for long enough? Oh, dear. Prince Philip may have been wishing his retirement would come early as he donned heavy ceremonial robes in the sweltering heat yesterday. God's sake. Accompanied by the Queen to a service at St Paul's Cathedral to mark the century of the Order of the British Empire, the Duke of Edinburgh, 95, and he's 95, had to tread carefully as he walked up the... Just imagine wearing that in the middle of the summer. Do me a favour, honestly. Give him a break. It's a bit much, isn't it? Dear me. Right, let's go to the phones. Evening, Danny. How are you? Evening. Good evening. Hello. All right. Now, try and sound a bit more upbeat. You always sound so bored all the time. God knows how you was one of those entertainment people at Avon Holidays. I was, I was enjoyed by many. You was enjoyed by many? What, doing what? Yes. Entertainment, obviously. What entertaining did you actually do? Well, I used to perform with Rory the Tiger and all the characters. Right. I used to do karaoke. Yes. I used to... What, in that sing. same monotone voice that you're talking to me now in? No, I used to, I used to be a presenter of party dances. Well, can you be a bit more happy? Can try, try and sound a bit more happier, dear. 
I mean, you'll you'd well, be anyway. perfect. You'll be perfect to take over from from that bloke at the weekend on LBC. What's his name? Matt Stadlin. What a boring voice he's got. Where do they get these people listen. from, Danny? I don't listen to LBC. Oh, do you not? Why is that then? Because it's in London. It's all over on DAB now. You should listen to my friend, the excellent Steve Allen in the morning. You'd like him. Have you heard of Steve Allen? I've heard of him. but Oh, I've he's fantastic. Seen... He's just rude to everyone. I love it. Oh, like me. I'm not rude to everyone. No, you're not. Hello to Tony Power joining us today. Joanna says she would also struggle with that robe. Did you see the robe that Prince uh, Philip had to wear today? Or yesterday, yeah, I think it was like yesterday. Curtain. Oh, it's a great big red thing and heavy and in the middle of the heat as well with no air conditioning within the robe itself. How annoying is that, lovey? Why well, have you called I can in? Imagine you wear, you wearing something like that, Chris. Huh? I well, the, pr actually, you wearing the priests like that. do at church. They've got all these heavy things on, haven't they? Yeah, they do actually. Priests and all that kind of stuff. Yes. They they always kind of. So yes, just a just a quick call, just a quick one. Not to be a long one this evening. Yes. Um, well, thank God for that. The. <laughs> Sorry. The other night. Who is there? Is there a cross line in here, dear? <laughs> What's wrong with my camera? Watched... Is that working yet? No, look at that. My camera's not working. Camera t camera two is not working correctly. Anyway, get on with it, Danny. We're waiting. Talk. What you did the other night when I was on the phone. What do you mean? And you tried to... Well, you pretended to fall asleep. Pretended? Pretended? <laughs> I don't pretend anything, dear. You actually made me <clears throat> fall asleep. I, it was so boring. Oh, right, OK. OK, thanks for that. That's all right. Now, excite me tonight somehow. Well, I've been I've been uh, working today. I did the late shift tonight. Were you at Greg's the Baker's? I certainly was. Uh, tell me, in the summer, do you find that you don't sell so many of the, the pasties and things? Do they, do they buy something different or, or, or what? It's not it's not much trade, really. Really? Um, I mean, do they yeah. switch? Do they still come in, but switch to, I don't know, cold sandwiches or something like that? Because you do all those, don't you? Yeah, we do all cold sandwiches, all prepared on the on site. But oh, do you the make them is, yourself? Oh. Say again. Do you make them yourself? I don't make them. No, I've got minions to do that for me. Is it? Is it your pretty little fingers that are putting that butter and slicing up those lovely pieces of cucumber, darling? I'm the one who puts the the uh, the pasties in the oven. Oh, oh, that's a hot job, isn't it? Oh, I get all hot and buzzed. Do you really? Oh, I don't think I'd like to know I, that, really. I get hot under the collar. But anyway, that's a different story for a different night. Well, I hope you have um, a shower <laughs> afterwards. I bet you I come home well, stinking of cheese and onion, don't you? I come home stinking of pasty. Oh! <laughs> It's disgusting. <laughs> what time are you up tomorrow? No. Are you up early tomorrow for work? Um, no, I'm on a late again. I've put myself on a few lakes. OK, well, have um, a good rest tonight, my love, if you can get to sleep in this heat. Oh, well, no, I had, I had to have the fan last night. Have you? It was the trouble awful. is a fan, it just blows warm air at you, doesn't it? Oh, it's better if than nothing, I suppose, window, isn't it? I put the fan on the window so next to the window so the air that's coming in goes through the fan so it's cold oh, it's when again. it gets to me. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It does. Yeah, I know what you mean. Put, maybe so if you put some like ice underneath the fan, it would blow cold ice with the ice. Would that work? I think, it yes, that's an excellent idea. I think I, I, that is an excellent idea. I think you should try that tonight. What I want you to do tonight, and you can report back. At least you'll have something interesting to talk about then next time you ring in, love. Go on. What you have to do is get a bowl of ice cubes, OK? Yeah. Place them. Now, would you be... It doesn't matter, I think. Place them at the f at fan level in front of the fan and turn the fan on and see if that makes the air even colder. OK. See, uh, you would please perform this experiment tonight, possibly with video, and send the video over. I will. You, you get everything on this show. Science, you do indeed. Everything. They are. I've given you some homework. Thanks for calling in, Danny. 
Take care. Bye bye. We look forward to the results from your experiment. And they'll be shared very soon. Good, good, good. Cheerio, Danny. Cheerio. Bye bye. There we are, Danny in uh, in in Wrexham in Wales. O two o eight one double four three four double seven is my phone number. Hello to the lovely Duke. Duke is with us tonight, who keeps getting very bored at work. He works in a betting shop. Oh, yes. What's the odds, uh, Duke? Have you got odds, please, on on uh, more than more than 10 people still watching this show at the end? Could you give me the odds on that? <laughs> Tony says someone left the cake out of the rain. <laughs> Carl Edwards. Good evening, Carl, who said there's a bottle of Mr Sheen in the bottom left. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with my shelves? Nothing wrong with my shelves. What are you talking about? Thank you very much. Now, what else have I been doing this week? Um, uh, I've told you, haven't I? I've told you everything that I did today. Oh, good news. The cat loot used the litter tray twice the other day. Unbelievable. Maybe she's going to start using the litter tray again. Oh, it would be so much easier. Because she just goes on the newspapers. I have to keep stealing copies of newspapers from all over the place. Um, that's it, isn't it? So I was going to tell you I watered the plants tonight. But just as I saw that place, just as I saw that note on the piece of paper, I realised the damn water has been on for nearly an hour downstairs. God's sake. Now, what else have we got here to tell you today? Oh, yes. Who uses carrier bags? Huh? Bad news if you go to Tesco's. The 5P carrier bags are about to be scrapped. Shock horror. I told you, you want to have one of those nice Ralph Lauren reusable ones. Something like that. Look at that. Tesco is to scrap its 5P single-use carrier bags and make customers pay up to 10P for a reusable bag for life. Have you got a bag for life? Well, maybe you should get a divorce then. <laughs> no one wants to be stuck with an old bag for life. Get rid of them, dear. Get rid of that husband or wife that you're not happy with. Why is the point in staying with someone if you're unhappy? There's no point at all. Get rid of them. Well, um, for just 10p, you can have an old bag for life here in Tesco's. What sort of things are they selling in there? Is this unwanted partners, old husbands and wives on shelves that no one wants anymore? We well, can buy one for £10 according to this article. It is feared the move will allow the supermarket to dodge a law requiring proceeds of single-use carrier bags to be given to charity. Ah. Ah. Look at that. As a result of the law, Tesco's has donated more than £27 million. Pounds. Wow. £27 million. I mean, I'm not asking for... Just one of those would do me. Just one tiny little million pounds. It is feared the move will allow them to dodge this law. Uh, they've donated £27 million to 3,500 good causes, such as improvements to parks, sporting facilities, school playgrounds. However, the higher charge uh, may deter shoppers from throwing away millions of... Well, of course it will. Yeah, I mean, have you been in a supermarket and seen them all? That's uh, that's twenty th that's two pounds thirteen, please. Oh, okay. Have you got a bag? Oh, that's uh, it's five p for the bag. Oh, uh, oh, oh, and then like that, they won't spend five p now. Have, and Waitrose is the worst place for them. Christ, these customers in Waitrose, they won't hand over them, but single penny more than they have to. They're terrible. You know, they'd rather do three trips. Oh, can I just leave that there? I'll take these to the car. I'll come back for the rest. Rather than spending five pounds. not going to spend ten pounds, are they? Huh? <laughs> Terribly tight people. Terrible, terrible. Um, Tony Power says, I've got a thousand bags in my cupboard. Oh, could you bring some down for me, Tony? Pop down to the two brewers next week um, on Thursday. If you could bring me sort of, I don't know. Uh, 20 or 30 of your carrier bags because I used them as bin liners and before they withdrew carrier bags I had loads of them out of that supermarket because in Sainsbury's and all that you used to take them didn't you they were on there you just take as many as you want well I did boxes of them <laughs> but I've almost run out I use them as uh, uh, bin liners Whenever I go away on holiday, I'm always so annoyed with Ronnie because he goes in my cupboard, right? 
And when, when the bin's full, he'll chuck that carrier bag away and replace it with one of my highly expensive bin liners, of which I have a roll, which has been in that cupboard for many, many years. They're not there to be used. Certainly not when carrier bags are available. Did you know you still get free carrier bags in garden centres? Bet you didn't know that. Something to do with contamination or something like that. We need to, That's why I go down the garden centre so much. They know us by, by name now. Hello, Chris and Ronnie. What have you come to buy today? Oh, only another £100 worth of plants. My mate struggles to put his in the garden. He's got no space. What did he buy today? He bought a fern. Now, isn't it funny? Ferns, I'm forever pulling them up in my garden. They're, they keep coming up in the garden all over the place, ferns. And you've got to pull them in such a way that they come out. You can't pull them out when they're young. You've got to wait until they're a few days old. And then the, the stalk is quite stiff and firm and erect. And you grab the erect stern foam thing and you pull hard. And you pull and you pull. And it comes up and it doesn't break. If you do them while they're too young, they break. You've got to grab it when it's, say, a couple of days old. And then it comes, like, you know, straight up. Don't bend it. Straight up and it comes out of the ground. He got no ferns. I don't know how you propagate ferns. I've, I've pulled, he's pulled a couple up. Or I've pulled a couple up for him. And he's planted them only for them to die the, the very next day. So I don't know how you, you propagate ferns. Obviously not that way. But he bought ferns today. And uh, why oh, bought a honeysuckle? I've been after one of those for a couple of You may remember, if you've been watching the show for a couple of years, I was after a honeysuckle a couple of years ago. I couldn't find one. I found one by accident. Yes, uh, uh, was it yesterday or today? I mean, it was today. No, it was today. I found a honeysuckle today when I went and bought the air conditioning and a couple of more foxgloves. My foxgloves, a couple of foxgloves from last year, I haven't come back up, so I'm a bit disappointed with that. Um, Alan says that he's offering 100 to 1 OK, I'm more than 10 people still watching this show when I finish it. How long have I been going for? An... No, I haven't been chatting for an hour, have I? <laughs> Where does the time go? I don't know. Um... <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Uh, hello to Teresa Adams. Oh, I got excited when I saw the word Teresa. I thought it was Teresa May because I am. Uh, I am now known in Central Station as Teresa's bitch because I am a bit of a fan of Teresa May. I, I'm sorry, I am. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> Alan says, sometimes I go to our 24-hour Tesco, which is only 100 yards away here in Hackney. And you know what they've been doing lately? They're scrapping all silver change in the change machine and giving out coppers. Oh, no. Don't you hate that? A pocket full of blooming change. I spent £1.70 the other day and got 30p change in one piece. Really? I chucked them across the floor. You didn't chuck money away, did you? Do you know how many people do that? Good evening, Nathan. You're a bit late, but never mind. You're here now. Do you know how many people da do that? I, I see it a lot in bars. They get their change, you know, two pence, and they just leave it there. I'm going around picking it all up. I made £10,000 last year through people just chucking change on the floor. Yes. Mad. Do you have to declare that one? Do you have to declare that? Found change. Is there a box on your tax form for that one? <laughs> I shall have to speak to my accountant about that. Uh, Tony said they should do with the bags what they did with the old days with the cider bottles years ago and they give you 10 pence when you return your bottles. Well, of course, you know all about cider, don't you, Tony? Tony is, I'm afraid to tell you, Tony is drunk most days of the week. Aren't you, Tony, lovey? God knows how you can even manage to get up sometimes. I really do worry about you. Now, did you have one of those Nokia phones? Well, I'm sure you saw the story a little while back. They bought back the Nokia 8210 or something like that. They bought another one now. Well, that must have been popular. Look, they bought this one out now. 12 years after it vanished, Nokia's dumb phone is back. It's only 50 quid. It looks all right, doesn't it? Has it got Skype on it? I think it's got Skype on it. Has it got Skype? I don't know. With text messaging, miniature games and a range of ringtones, the Nokia 3310 was the iPhone of its day. <clears throat> now in a world of saturated with social media, video streaming and HD cameras, the faithful old Nokias are seen as outdated. But after 12 years, the tech giant phased them out. It's coming back. A modern version is coming back. And it's proving to be a hit with those yearning, 
yearning for a touch of nostalgia in their lives as retailers have seen a huge number of pre-orders on the retro time. I quite like nostalgia, didn't you? I like old television. Sometimes I watch my old my own old shows and it makes me very sad to see how much hair I used to have then and how slim and gorgeous I was. I used to fancy myself. I really did. You know, if I could marry myself, believe me, I would do. I absolutely would do. Yes. Good evening, Kevin Webster. Bit late, but you're there, aren't you? Never mind. Uh, consumers are also attracted by the price tag of only £50, £49.99, making it a relatively uh, cheap device. So there we are. Uh, if you want one of those, the latest incarnation uh, to the bells and whistles of the modern smartphone with countless apps from Facebook to Snapchat and Instagram. It's got a small screen, a clunky 2 mix megapixel camera and relies on 2.5G connectivity. Gets limited internet access. Will you want one of those? Want a simple phone, something like that? Eh? I think you might like that, wouldn't you? Eh? I know a lot of people, uh, elderly people actually, like uh, my Auntie Brenda. Oh, she's in a bit of a... Someone keeps sc scratching my auntie's car. Isn't that a horrible thing to do? And she lives um, in this tiny little place where there's hardly anyone along this street. And someone keeps scratching the side of her car. And um, Auntie Brenda, she's a very inoffensive person. She she would she'd be so upset if she ever thought she had offended someone. And she, oh, Christopher, someone scratched my car again. So I suppose it's kids or someone like that. Isn't that a horrible thing to do? Scratch people's cars and, and all that business. Alan says that uh, my 11-year-old daughter wants a £300 phone. For God's sake, my children think I'm a millionaire. Could you help out, Chris? No! What do, has, a, has a sign come on somewhere saying that this is a charitable institution, dear? No! We're going to hand you 300 quid. I've just had to buy the air conditioning unit next door. 350 quid, that was. Comes on wheels, though. <laughs> Nice bloke, he helped us to the car and all that. Uh, Tony's off to the beach uh, in the morning. Well, have a nice time there, Tony. Were you putting your little toes in that seat? Are you wearing Speedos, Tony? Please don't wear Speedos, dear. People like us shouldn't wear Speedos. Have you seen them on the beach? Middle-aged people like me wear fat wearing Speedos. What do they look like? Or cycling shorts. Great big fat people like me Wearing cycling shorts. What the hell's all that about? Please, don't wear them. It was in Gran Canaria last week. It's going to be 30 degrees tomorrow. I'm so glad I have my air conditioning. Now, have you still got your pound coins? Well, time to start getting rid of them, gang. Here's a story in this morning's, or yesterday's, Super Soil Away Sun. An influx of crooked currency has forced the Royal Mint to release a new £1 coin that will be much harder to forge, as you well know. The introduction of the counterfeit proof coin, or so they say, you know, so they say, because often they've said this sort of thing, you know, oh, they'll never be able to do this, or, or they'll never be able to break into this, and someone finds a way, don't they? We've only got a few months left to spend our old round pound coins. So I'm sure some of you have got these like jars and things like that. I mean, I've never collected money like that. I, I never keep money in the house. Never. I'm always worried that someone's going to break in and nick money. So I don't, as soon as I get paid, generally on the way home, I'll stop at a machine and put it in. Or, or certainly do it the next day. I never keep money at home. Uh, but I know some, some of you probably, you've got little jars and things, or maybe those great big... You know, those big sweet jars with pound coins and things in there. Time to get rid of them, my loves. You've got to get rid of them. Uh, Britons have about 1.3 billion pounds. Billion? I mean, you can't get the get get the get the amount into your head, can you? 1.3 billion worth of coins stored in money boxes around the country. But how do you know you've got a fake? A lot of the pound coins are fake. Don't know if you knew that. Don't forget that phone line's still open if you want to call in. 020-814-3477. 020-814-3477. Or you can Skype in on United Kingdom, United Kingdom Talk. Um, charity worker Roy Wright claiming he's already found a fake in the new design. Roman explains how you can find a fake £1 coin. This is on the new design. The new design! These were the ones that no one is going to be able to copy. What? They found a fake already. So here we go. 
How do you spot the fake one pound coins? Go on, search through those pockets. Any pound coins in there? Got one or two? Have a look. The date and design on the reverse do not match. The reverse design changes every year and a complete list is available if you go on the, uh, on the same website, okay? The lettering on the edge of the coin doesn't match at the year. That can be different. The milled edge is poorly defined. The lettering is uneven in depth, spacing or even missing letters. Or the face designs are not as sharp or well defined. The coin appears shiny and doesn't show signs of ageing despite supposedly being decades old. The coin's colour is different compared to genuine coins. So that, that's the old coins, OK? Um, but even the new ones they're saying there... Uh, oh, Tony's calling in. Right, let's just, uh, just take that. Just a second, Tony. I'll be with you in a minute, all right? Um, it says here, finally check the alignment on the front and reverse designs. If the queen's head is upright, the design on the other side should be two. The two images should also be in line wherever fakes are often screwed. They reckon there's 30 million fake round pound coins in circulation and it's illegal to use one. Do you ever check your pound coins before you hand them over, Tony? Hello? Oh, hello. How are oh, you Oh, there you are. Do you ever take, check your fake coins before you hand no, them over? I, no, I don't. I believe you can rob them against something or something like that and test them. I'm not sure how you, how you do it. But oh, right. I, I mean, I've never looked. I you know, you rub it against is it brown paper or something like that. Oh, I can't remember what. Oh, I don't know about yeah. brown paper. You, you know, you know, there is some method of testing it anyway. I know that. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Anyway, by the way, I'm not fat, by the way. I never said you were. I'm a slim and petite. I did I know. say you were? Did I say Tony, you are fat? Did I say <laughs> no. that? Do you see? You're, you, you see, you, you're one. Uh, have you been offended? Go on. Have you been offended? Not a slight. You have, haven't you? You've been offended, and yet there was no offence given. That's like most no. of the people in this <laughs> blooming world now. I'm offended. No offence was given. You heard something <laughs> that I hadn't even said. Witnesses are here. Millions of them watching the show. Well, there you go. How are, how, you? How, are you do, how are you doing, Chris? Very well, right. thank you. Yeah, I should be finishing at the two brewers soon. Um, they're going till three in the morning. That's that's far too late for me, I'm afraid. Oh, you're not, oh, you're not doing the two brewers anymore, are you? No, uh, no, I haven't quite finished yet. I'm not there tonight. Um, but right. I'm just waiting for a date that they're going to go to three o'clock and then uh, then things will be arranged. So that's cool. Oh, I see. So, oh, 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 so there is a possibility of something being sorted then. What do you mean? Um, of you actually going back again? Is that no, 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 no. Once it goes to three o'clock, that's it. I've done my oh, time. I see. Now. Done my time. Okay, yeah. Done my time. Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't be the same without you anyway, would it? Oh, it would. I don't fit in in there anymore. You know that damn well. I've never felt I've fitted in there for a number of years, to be honest. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'd like the two brewers. You know, I've, I've, it, I've already got a replacement. My uh, uh, Sunday night um, at uh, at uh, in in Camden is is quite good. You know, I rather do karaoke now than DJ, and I've told you this before on night time. Yeah, it's it, it, it's good fun. Mind you, I was at karaoke at the two brewers the other night, and and to be quite honest with you, I do like the karaoke down there. And I, I, although I don't sing myself, I just sort of pop along just to listen. Oh, to you should have sing, a go. But, but um, a group of people, a group of, of these uh, X Factor people turned up. Oh, right, yeah. And they were so up their asses, you wouldn't believe it. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. Goodness, they were a right bunch. And, I'm not uh, surprised. They were so rude, rude and that to me anyway. So. Were they? Did they get uh, through to the finals so or they, anything like that? Huh? They didn't get through to the finals or anything like that, no? No, it'd be, you know, they just went in for karaoke, but, but um, I just found them a bit, you know, a bit... Uh, well, I didn't like them all that much, to be quite honest. Right. Um, right. I got chatting to them, but they were very, uh, you know, they sort of only said so much to you. Kind Full of, of it. Thing, and, Full of it, and yeah. Very, yeah. Yeah. You're know, very distant people. You know, almost, almost, I am almost to an extent of being rude. If yeah. Anything, you know? Full of self-importance. I think that's the way it was, and <laughs> I, I was actually quite offended by it. <laughs> say, but, well, that's but, twice yeah, you've been offended so now in two I, days. I left him in the end. I didn't <laughs> bother making any further conversation with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, well. 
Did you enjoy the Eurovision this year? Because you're a big Eurovision fan, aren't you? I, I was just, I was in Gran Canaria. I, I practically missed most of it. I, oh, I was, surely they must have been. Had, they must the pride, pride They must have been showing it there somewhere. I didn't. I didn't hear it all, to be quite honest with you. Really? I oh, heard, okay. You know, I heard it in drips and drabs and all that. You know, but mm. you know, it was pretty much uh, the predicted result, really, wasn't it? You right. Know, so. What, the Portuguese guy? No, I thought it was Italy that everyone thought it was going to win. I thought it would be Portugal or Italy. I thought Italy um, I thought Italy would do better, but uh, it, it would, would depend how people thought yes. or, um, of, of the Portuguese song, you know, because it was a kind of, you know, it was... It was very different, yeah. wasn't it? Uh, it, it, it? It was a different song, and that's the type of song that normally wins. It doesn't matter whether it's a slow song or... or, or pop or dance mm. or whatever it is mm-hmm. it's usually something that's um, it, you know it has to be the different song there on the night that usually wins you know so yes yes and, uh, and it was obviously they're going to be that or Italy they were, you know, they were the two different ones so. yeah yeah but yeah. Uh, but that young guy got in there in second place from uh, Bulgaria he did he, didn't he it was quite, was quite good, good as well, as well. I quite like the Australian one as well. I, I, I'm very pleased that Australia is in it because they're big fans. And they had that wonderful lady from uh, China. I think she's Chinese, isn't she? China? The, the, the Australian one. Oh, you mean last year? Yeah. No, 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 no. The, the lady doing the results oh, well, calling in from Australia. I, I, wasn't, wasn't I, think, I think she was originally from China, but she, she's, she's very big in Australia on the television. I, I've, I love her to bits. She's fantastic, she is. I can't remember her name now. Oh, right, yeah. Mm. Um, mm. Do, uh, Alan wants to know, does Brighton still have a nudist beach? It does, yeah. It's it's down it's down near the notorious bushes. The, the, bu- the, oh, there are bushes down there, is there? Bushes is a naughty place for 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 homosexuals. Oh who, my God! Who, who like to have a cup of tea and a ginger nut? Well, we don't want to know about night. that. Not on this clean living program. Thank you very much. And they tend to pop down there for for your your for late night tea, basically. Well, I can't understand why anyone would want to go on a nudist beach. I bet there are only fat people like myself on there. Fat old well, middle-aged no, people be, like me. They'd be totally surprised that it's there'd be no but, uh, one it, nice, it, Tony. Quite mixed, actually. There would be no fact, one nice. One day, and there's children down there, believe it or not. <laughs> well, yeah, children. Oh you know, no, no, no. on a nudist beach. Now. Everybody just anybody wants to go nude. On a nudist no, it's nice, no. beach now. No, don't do it it's, for me. It's not. It's not what we. It it sort of turned out to be a gay nudist beach, you know, for for a bit, didn't it? And then. And then everybody got you know, cottoned on to it and just said, oh, well, if they're going nude, we're going nude as well. It's so. very dangerous to have that sun on those parts of the body that are not usually exposed to it, love. Well, it could be. It could be It could be quite painful, couldn't it? Oh, I wouldn't want to go out and lose this speech. Yeah, you'd have to make sure you bring some, uh, you know, something to rub into it, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's some, there was a sun, sun, one of the suntan lotions, apparently. I saw it. Was it an Audi one? I can't remember now. But they said, don't buy this because it doesn't do anything. I saw that in the paper the other day. Do you use suntan? Think, I don't think any of it does anything, quite honestly. It's, no. just, uh, it's just you rub it in and whatever. I don't know. Good <laughs> stuff, that is. Oh, oh it's, I can't stand it. All greasy and nasty. I can't bear it. Anything like oh, that? I don't know. Oh no! no, no you know, no. get yourself out there, Chris, and get yourself nude. You know. No, I'm not going on a nudist yeah, beach. Yeah, go on. That's Greece horrible. Well no, no, <laughs> don't do it for me at all. Even in my, even in here, I don't walk around naked in here, in case the cat sees me. She's very old now. I don't want her to have a heart attack seeing me naked, <laughs> making a cup of tea in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, like? Tony. Well, thanks for calling in, my friend. It's a pleasure. Have a lovely evening, all right? Yeah, yeah chat And have a lovely yeah. time in Brighton tomorrow. Bring me oh, a small God. gift back, please, a small gift. Yeah, but I said, watch out Brighton, I said. Yeah. Anyway, take care, yeah? Cheerio now. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye now. Yeah, and keep your clothes on as well, mate. <laughs> Does that do it for you? Nudist beaches. I could just, oh, no. Everything hanging out everywhere. I don't think it's a very nice thing at all going to a news event. Matt's going to Barcelona in the morning. Barcelona. La da 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 da. Barcelona. Oh, you'll have a nice time. I've never been there. I've been to Benidorm. That was in 1983 for my honeymoon, Benidorm. Yes, yeah, so we stayed at. Where did we stay? The, the, the Hotel Orange. Hotel Orange. Why is it in all other countries 
The word hotel is first. And here, it would be the Orange Hotel, wouldn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's like the... The Mandarin Hotel. The Savoy Hotel. In the Mediterranean, it's Hotel Savoy. Or, why is, why is Hotel... For, why is that swap round like that? Because we are right. Of course we are. That is correct. Thank you. Um, have a nice time in Barcelona. Won't you? Uh, Alan says, what's your favourite place to visit abroad? I very much like... I like... Disney Florida, not Euro Disney. I'm not keen on Euro Disney, not after the last uh, time. Uh, I mean, the children had a great time. It was my nephew and his phone. They had a great time, and that's that's the most important thing. But I wasn't too... I thought we were really ripped off quite badly for food and, and things there. So, But uh, Florida Disney, I like that very much. What's my? I don't have a favourite place. Australia I love very much, but it's just so far. Uh, I loved Israel because that was all... You know, stuff that I'd learnt when I was at school and Jesus things and all that business, as indeed Rome was as well. The Vatican, I love the Vatican. Um, been to Italy, that was okay. Barbados, I liked it there. St. Lucia, I liked it there. Have I been anywhere I didn't like? No. I think I've been anywhere I didn't like, really. No. And I haven't had, like, a, a bad holiday experience, you know, like you... Like you have some people have these bad holiday experiences, don't you? Now I've got something else to show you here. Just a minute. I'll, br I'll bring you this. If you, if you're gonna die soon, I've got something for you coming up in a minute. Let's just say hello to a few more people. Um, Lewis, you're still there. I'm surprised, Lewis. You're still there. You're still there. Alan says, I stopped doing karaoke competitions because people were scratching up my cars, snapping the wing mirror, letting my tyres down. I had nothing to do with the judging. I, I won't do karaoke competitions. They're, they're just a nightmare. Because everyone thinks they should win. There's no humility in it, is there? A lot of people now, and this is, this is general now, not just karaoke. Have you noticed how, how unhumble most people are now? Or no humility at all. You know, I am the best and I can do this. That's how people are now. Not me. You wouldn't believe how nervous and, and un... Oh, what's the word? Un, um, uneducated. That could be a word for me, actually. Um, oh, what, what, what's this I've just found? Oh, it's a little poppy. A little poppy that I would be wearing. Un... Oh, God. I can't think what that word is now. Um, why do these words not come to me when I want them? Um, you know when you're confident. You wouldn't believe how unconfident I actually am doing anything that I do. That's absolutely true. I have no confidence in myself at all. Isn't that funny? But the people that are, oh, then they're dreadful. I am the best singer. I should have won. It's like that. No way do I do karaoke competitions anymore. And the other thing is you find some people won't enter a competition and they stop coming because they don't think they're good enough. And actually, they're probably better than the people come in to, to enter it. There was one woman. I don't know what her name was. Um, and I was doing a... I'm not there anymore, but I was doing a karaoke somewhere. And we had this competition. And this woman kept ringing up the manager Oh, is it the competition tonight? Oh, do you think I'll win? And ch chatting up the manager on the phone. Awful people. Awful people. For 500, it was, a, it was a big prize. 500 quid. This woman kept ringing up. We saw her at the heat, which she won. After she won the heat, she kept ringing up the manager. I'm like pretending to friend him. And then she turned up for the final, lost, never saw her again in my life. That's what happens at karaoke competitions. Don't do them if you've got a venue. Please don't do them. You just, they're a nightmare. I won't do them. Um, hello to Claire. Evening, Claire. Uh, Sticky Vicky Benidorm. <laughs> I've heard about her. Hello, Steve Andrews is with us. Apparently she's retired now, Sticky Vicky. <laughs> I'm not reading that. Dino's been to Barbados. It's nice there, isn't it? Do you know what? While I was in St. Lucia... A bloke there offered to take me to the to to a bar, 
uh, and I didn't go. And he was quite nice as well. I'm very shy like that, you know. You wouldn't think it, would you? You wouldn't think it. Uh, Dina says, have you been to Dubai? No, no interest in that. It just, it's just like shops and concrete and sand, isn't it? I've no interest in Dubai at all, I'm afraid, no. A lot of people like it, though. My best mate loves it, him and his boyfriend. They absolutely love Dubai. I think they've been three times now, stayed in one of those really posh hotels there. All marble, marble um, bathrooms on the, I mean, I don't know, 25th floor or something like that. Um... Uh, unaffected. No, it was un unaffected. It was un. Of, of the words gonna get unconfident. Uncom. I don't know if that is that a word. Unconfident, Tweety. I don't know. Uh, one of the pubs owner was the judge. Her daughter won the first. Ah, oh, you see, one of the worst singers in the final. There was riots. I'm sure there was. No, it's not. It's just not worth doing competitions like that. Quiz nights are great. I'm looking to do a quiz night on a Thursday. Anyone who knows a, a bar, a pub that might want. Uh, a quiz night on a Thursday. Please get in contact. I'd love to do another quiz night during the week, all right? Uh, thank you, Lewis, for saying that. It's very right. I should have confidence. I have, I've have. i never had any confidence in myself, Lewis. Honestly, maybe... Maybe in the mid-80s I had a lot of confidence. Or oh, I thought I was the bee's knees. I did. I thought I was the bee's knees in the, in, in the mid-80s. Well, I think that was a, a like young, early 20s I was then. And I think you do then. Although there's people my age that have an enormous amount of confidence, don't they? But when it comes across as overconfident, I, I just, it's horrible that is. I, I don't have confidence. Honestly, I don't. I don't. Funny, isn't it? Uh, Tony says, you're right about the karaoke competitions. People get very upset when they don't get picked or win. I did some judging at the two brewers recently, and I'm always, always blacklisted now by the people who said they should have won. They accuse you of cheating. It, it, do, do not be a karaoke competition judge, Tony. I'm telling you now. It's not worth the trouble. It's awful. I should have won. Oh, they were the best. Oh, it's all fixed. No, don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. Matt says, I've been in various karaoke competitions and never even been placed. And yet, Matt, you are a fantastic singer. You should have won something. You absolutely should have won something. But isn't that a bit like the X Factor, Matt? You see people there get put through and they can't sing a bloody note. Sometimes I wonder if those judges on X Factor are actually hearing the Sam sound as we are on the telly. <laughs> Although I quite like the voice. I like the voice. I, I do like the voice. Um, no, we're not having a competition at Central, Lewis. I won't do it. You get someone else to do it, mate. I don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. Uh, all right. Carl Edwards is with us. Hello, Carl. Welcome along, Carl. Welcome, welcome, welcome. First time watching. I'm glad you're enjoying the show, Carl. Thank you very much. We are about to wrap up now because it's like 1.15 and I'm a bit needing a cup of tea now. And my Slimmer's World Double Chock Crisp, of which I will have two. And I'm having these tonight because I've got no digestives left. <laughs> See, I can't have biscuits in the house. I bought, uh, no, actually, Ronnie bought round a packet of biscuits on. When was I off again? Tuesday night? Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Well, they've gone. He only had three. The whole packet's gone. I cannot have those in the house. Oh, they're deadly. Deadly. All right. Um, I do. Oh, right. OK, sorry. Um, I'd like to do a quiz at Central Station, but I'm already there two, uh, three times a week. And I personally, I think four times a week, one person in the same venue. I think that's too much for the venue. And the person as well. People would get fed up seeing my face. That's that's true, that is. I wouldn't do it at Central be, uh, because of that. Three nights in one place is enough. It's not good for the venue and the person doing it to take... I think three is pushing it anyway. Two. Two is good. Two is good. One's fantastic. Two's good. Three, I think you're probably pushing it a little bit. Four, no, it's too much in one place. That being said, I used to do four nights in uh, the Black Cat when it was open. That wonderful, wonderful place, the Black Cat. Oh, I miss that so much. I really do. Uh, Alan won a competition ten years ago. Uh, I sang If I Could Turn Back... If I Could Turn Back... To oh, no, not that one. If I Could Turn Back the Hands of Time. R. Kelly. £500. He bought everyone a drink in the pub. £183. Cost me nothing to go in the competition. Well, it's not bad, is it, eh? 
Tweety says, bring some British friends, bought Jaffa cakes to the States this week. Do you not have Jaffa cakes in the States, Tweety? They're nice, aren't they? They're not very many calories, those, as long as you don't have many. This is the thing. It's like those Jaffa cakes, that are only 40 calories, and then suddenly you've had 10. Because you can easily eat 10, can't you, Tweety? But I reckon you're one of those people that don't put on weight, aren't you, Tweety? You're lucky. Lucky, 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 Tweety. Yeah. All right. Um, I was going to tell you one more thing. Here it is. Before I do today's but Oh, well, yeah, it's the, yesterday's birthdays. Because this is still Thursday. Although it's Friday now, this is still Thursday's show. You might get another one this morning. Because I've been getting up a bit early. Oh, do you know what time I got up this morning? Seven o'clock. I think it's because I was so hot in bed. And I did wake up very hot. But I've got the air thing in there now. So I shall leave that on tonight. Nice cool. Uh, 16 degrees centigrade, whatever that is in Fahrenheit. Uh, this story here. Now, I, I, I picked up this Daily Mail while I was having, a, having a, a cup of tea and something to eat in Waitrose earlier. For those looking forward to an eternal rest free of smart technology, it may come as a blow to find that the digital age can now follow you after you're dead. Isn't this fantastic news? Now, I do hope... That when I go, whenever that will be, and because we don't know, do we? It might happen in the next minute. In which case, wouldn't that be fantastic for you to actually watch me pass away while doing something I love? You know, I think that's all you can hope for, really, isn't it? To, to actually go... Look at Tommy Cooper. Tommy Cooper, what a way to go. In the middle of a stage, doing what he loved. If, 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 if it could happen like that, or while asleep. You know, we can just hope for that, can't we? And not have, like, terrible pain or injury or suffering or disease. Anyway, back to this story, but I don't want to get too serious on that. A firm in Slovenia, Slovenia is selling the world's first... Digital tombstone. Oh, I like that. That's what, that's what I was going to say. When I go, right, because there are some people um, who do in entertainment stuff. When they go, they don't want their stuff passed on. I'm saying to you now, please feel free to share as much as my stuff as possible. Keep reposting my shows so that I continue talking to you even when I'm dead. How fabulous is that? A firm in Slovenia is selling the world's first digital tombstone, tombstone with a 48-inch touchscreen, allowing mourners to view pictures and videos of their loved ones, as well as pages of text. Oh, yes, I must upload all my videos onto the, my tombstone before I go. I'm liking the idea of this. This device, £2,500, looks like any other grey stone from afar, but standing in front of its sensors for a few seconds brings the display to life. Families can put anything they want on it, but when no one is around, it will just show a person's name, their both birth and death dates. Milan Dorman of the University of Maribor in Slovenia is working on a mobile phone app for the headstone to let mourners hear the soundtrack of any of the videos being displayed. Check that out. I'm liking the sound of that. Do you want a di would you have a digital tombstone? Would you have that? I would. A little screen on there. As you walk past, my little head would pop up. Hello, it's me speaking to you from the dead. I'm liking the sound of that. Would you have that? Would you want that? My, uh, my mum would hate something like that. I've got to tell you. I don't think she'd like that at all, my mum or dad. They're, they're both gone, incidentally. Um... I think I think I'd like I might order one now. Can I order one in advance? <laughs> Do you get it cheaper? <laughs> oh dear, dear me. All right, let's do today's birthdays and uh, we're disappeared tonight, okay, boys and girls. Uh, oh, I printed those ones off because it's yesterday, isn't it? Yeah. So Thursday's birthday is coming up now. Oh, we must we must quickly wish Adam the Plumber happy birthday for Tuesday, because I can can you believe I did I did say it within the show, but when it came to the birthday list later on I didn't do it did I? So sorry about that Adam the Plumber, much apologies. 
Uh, today's birthdays, that's Thursday, Ed Preston, the very, very delightful and extremely good looking Will You Go Out With Me, Ed Preston, birthday t uh, on Thursday. Happy birthday, Ed. Uh, John Roberts, it's John Roberts' birthday. Happy birthday, John. Paul Edwards, who used to come along to the karaoke in um, Belushi's in Hammersmith. Happy birthday, Paul. Haven't seen you for some time now. Steve Humphrey, happy birthday. Will to Will, happy birthday. And Paul Winchcombe Smith, who is a very, very dear friend of mine. Uh, he used to live just up the road from me. He is now living uh, and has been for... Oh, drop the glasses. He's been for some time living in Australia. And uh, he's a, a professional hairdresser there in Sydney. So happy birthday to you all. Let's have the song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. All right? I know it's over. It's Thursday. It's finished now, but I uh, hope you had a nice Thursday. Now, I thought it was someone else's birthday. Let me just check, because it's now Friday, We're at the end of this show. Uh, now, the birthdays haven't come up yet. It might be a bit too early for me to have got them up. Let's have a quick look. Da, 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 da. No, they haven't come up yet. I think they come up at another time. But I thought it was um, Sharon Stone's birthday. Let's have a look if she's got anything there. No, doesn't say anything. Uh, let me just. Sorry, because this this is a this is um one of the lovely girls who used to come along to the Black Cap. November the sixteenth. Oh, it can't be, can it? It says November the 16th, so it can't be. Okay, I must have that completely wrong. All right, never mind then. All right, boys and girls, some late messages coming in. Uh, Ian says, uh, sorry, <laughs> wrong fit. Now I've lost where I am now. Oh, no. One moment, please. Is that it? There we are. Um... Let's have a look. Have we done with these? I think we're done. That's it. No, that's it. There we are. We've done the birthdays. That's it for the show today then, boys and girls. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. You might even get another one tomorrow morning. If I get up early enough. 7 o'clock in the morning I woke up this morning. That's too early. I did manage to get off to sleep again, but I had to watch a bit of News 24 because it's all about those... Um, uh, we're still getting the, the news about the uh, poor people uh, who were murdered in uh, Manchester at the moment on the news, so I watched a bit of that this morning. Eventually, I got back off the sleep, and I think I got up about 10 o'clock in the end. Seven o'clock. If I wake up 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, we'll have another show tomorrow morning as well, OK? Uh, have a good sleep, and enjoy your Friday night closed eyes. Friday morning closed eyes. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll see you again very soon, all right? Bye-bye now.